Thank you for tuning in to Thy Kingdom Come broadcast today. This is the Pastor Vivalette Poole, and today we will be talking on the subject that is very interesting, is very close to being the new year, and Christmas is past us. But we don't we don't want to forget the real reason why Jesus came. He was the Prince of Peace, wasn't he? And sometimes we can get worried and we can get upset and we can get stressed out. I know some of us get stressed out quite a bit. And so as a result, we need to learn how to lean and trust in Jesus enough to realize that he is our Prince of Peace. And so today we're going to be talking about peace of mind in Christ Jesus. So get your Bibles and get ready. We're going to have a little Bible study on peace of mind. The Prince of Peace. He'll give us the peace of mind. So get your Bibles. We're going to be coming from St. John chapter 14 and beginning at verse 1. And then we'll go to verse 27. Uh, we'll be talking more on peace scriptures. So uh, here we go. And I have with me also my uh, husband who is also going to be giving thoughts about peace as well. Uh, Pastor Willie Bottoms right here. Say hello to the congregation. Put the people out there. Hey, congregation, how y'all doing tonight? <laughs> so we both will be talking regarding um, peace. And uh, so let's talk a little bit before I go any further. Can you, uh, Pastor, tell, tell the congregation, tell people what it feels like to be worried? When's the last time you were worried about something? Oh, hmm. <laughs> so many things. <laughs> Old age, working, changing jobs, <laughs> the brain being overactive. <laughs> of course, you know the, the main one we all worry about the bills that we shoot around the corner. <laughs> but overall, you know, it's it's typical of us for for being flesh beings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to be worried. To be worried. But, you know, there's, there's always solitude somewhere. But we got to find that moment of solitude, that moment of peace. Um, I know for the past month, when I got transferred from one department to another, and to another, to another, to another, they transferred, we're going to find something to suit your personality. <laughs> and of course, being who I am, you know, person education background and all this and all that and, and you know you look at things spiritually and then you look at things worldly because we're all of the world so yeah you know, we gotta pay bills and we gotta do certain things that are of the world yes we do but at the same sense we still also have to focus on the things not of this world right amen and so sometimes those two things clashes and they can clash real hard sometimes <laughs> Amen. Well, we're going to be coming from uh, St. John chapter 14, and I've got it on the overhead up here, and I want you to begin reading for us uh, St. John chapter 14, uh, and beginning at verse 1, and uh, we're going to talk about being worried and being at peace, and there are two different things that we need to balance in our life as we begin to talk about being worried because there's a lot of things in the world to be worried about. I mean, turn on the news and there you go. You've got plenty of things to be worried about. But he's going to begin reading from St. John chapter 14 verse, verses 1 through 4. And we're going to stop right there. Uh, and uh, so I'll let him begin reading. Let not your heart be troubled, yet believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again 
and receive you unto me, unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. Ye now, sorry. Yep, so whether I go, ye know, and the way, ye know. And that was Jesus talking um, to, to his disciples. You know, it is true that Jesus instructed his disciples to let not their heart be troubled. Now, back then, Jesus knew what his end would be. He knew that he would suffer and die on the cross and shed blood. I mean, if you had a sixth sense of knowing what your life was going to be like and you knew that well, how you were going to die, you knew what was going to happen, the people around you that loved you like disciples loved Jesus, he had to tell them to not be troubled because he knew that they would be. He could see into the future. He knew things. But he told them he was going away to prepare a place for them. In his father's house were many, many rooms or many, many mansions, many, many homes. And so he said that he would come again and receive them to their to his self and uh, so that where that he was, he would never leave them again. And so we want to talk about it today. There's a lot in this scripture, but we're going to fast forward to the 14th, I mean, the 27th verse to talk about the peace that Jesus said that he was going to leave with us. Um, I think it's, uh, <laughs> it's actually St. John 14 and uh, 27, I believe it is. And I'm going to read it because uh, I'm, I'm here now. I'll read it. It says, peace, I leave with you. My peace give I unto you, not as the world giveth. And so let's talk about what the world has to offer regarding peace. Um, the world has a lot to, to offer when it comes to peace. Now, a lot of people don't like to think about the world offering peace. Uh, because there's so many different ways that people try to gain peace. But Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. He said that first. And But he said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so do you ever get just like scared to death? about what may be happening and the year 2018 is coming up and people are making new, you know, new year's re resolutions and they're doing everything to try to change their future, to change what they did in 2017. They want to do some different things. They want to set some goals. They want to do something different. They just don't want anything to be like it was before. So they're going to you know, make all these resolutions about gaining weight. They're going to lose weight. They're going to do more exercise and they're going to eat less fatty foods. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And so they're worried. They're worried that this year will be like, the 2018 will be like, like 2017 if they don't change some things. They're worried about their children. Uh, if they're going to graduate from high school, they're worried about who the people that their kids are around. They're worried about uh, their jobs. I mean, there's so many things to be troubled about in this world. But Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. So the world has peace that they want to offer, but the peace that they have is not, is not um, everlasting. See, God's, Jesus' peace that he leaves is everlasting. And he's talking about the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Now, in 1 John, I'm sorry, St. John chapter 14, it talks about the Comforter, which the Father will send in Jesus' name. And see, when he began to talk about peace, he began to talk about the Comforter. And so I want... Uh, I want pastor to go down and read what Jesus was saying even further. We read part of what he was talking about, but see, 
let's not let's find out just what kind of peace Jesus was referring to because see people have peace in liquor they they have peace in you know possibly uh friendships or friends they have peace in um you know listening to or even in drugs or they they get peace all kinds of ways in the club you know they get peace in having maybe having a party or you know there's a lot of ways to obtain peace but the peace that Jesus was referring to um was a different kind of peace uh and in verse in verse uh in verse 16 i think we uh need to go uh down and and see what the lord is talking about here uh when he talks about the comforter because you know the spirit of god is a comforter he'll comfort you when you're sick he'll comfort you when you're not feeling well or when you're mentally drained or when you can't stop thinking about something that's negative the comforter is there. I'm not saying those 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 thoughts are not going to come. You know, when you talk about peace, you think about complete solitude. But we're not talking about peace where things around you are not going to happen. Because and believe me, as long as you live in this world, there's going to be things that happen. As long as you live on this earth, there are going to be things that occur. But it's how you take what occurs. It's how you get through what occurs. And it's the comforter uh, that the father will send in, uh, in, 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 he said, in my name, will teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance, whatsoever things I've said unto you. So in, in St. John 15, it talks about the comforter. I'm sorry, the 14. It talks about the comforter. So I'm going to let... Um, let the pastor read read it in verse 26 of this same chapter because this is the reason it's in the same chapter is because this is the peace that he was talking about he knew that we couldn't make it without this kind of peace he knew that there was no other peace that there was in the entire world there was nothing else that can can, can solve issues and make us feel better about ourselves but this particular thing so in john 14 you see, in the same chapter, he talks about the comforter. So go ahead, Pastor, read that verse for us. For the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Yep, and lo, he is with us always, even until the end of the world. Praise God. So the comforter is clearly stated here that it's the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit does more than just comfort. And the Father sent the comforter to teach us all things. You see, it just not only comforts, it teaches you things, and it brings things back. You know, as we get older, we forget things, but the Holy Spirit will bring things back and help you remember things, especially the things that God has said to us through the word, things that were good, the things that we need to think of. Now, when we go to verse 27, he talks about peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. See, he talks about that, the world and how the world can try to bring peace to us but we're going to still be troubled because after we take that drink or after we take that fix on, of the drugs that we're taking or after that we eat that piece of cake or after we listen to that wonderful song that we, you know, we fell in love with or after that we have sex or after we do whatever it is that we think we get, you know, big enough and bad enough to do, it's going to bring us peace. After we smoke that cigarette, whatever it is. We're going to find ourselves still lacking the peace of God. You know, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. You see, Jesus talked to the woman at the well about the same Holy Spirit. He, he, he said that there was water that he had that would help her never thirst again. And so it's like that in the natural realm. You know, if you drink water, it, it, 
it helps you not be thirsty, but you know, after you, after a while you get thirsty again, right? But see, this is an ongoing thing. The Holy Spirit keeps you from getting thirsty or actually keeps you from having trouble or being troubled or worried. It's a constant reliever. Uh, you want to talk about a constant reliever of pain from ailments. I mean, the Holy Spirit is a healer. It is a comforter. It is a teacher. It is a guider. It leads and guides you into all truth, even in things you don't know or things you didn't think about or didn't know about. And so why wouldn't you want something that would help you in your daily walk with Christ? It help you stay at peace with your brother and your sister because the word of God says we need to follow peace with all men and holiness without no man shall see the Lord. So this will help us keep peace with other people too. It'll help us forgive people. You know, you know how it is when your mind races and you keep thinking about stuff that somebody did over and over again. It keeps playing back. It's hard to forgive a person when you constantly think about what they've done over and over again. But that's not, that's, 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 that's where raging, that's frustration, that's no peace. But the Holy Spirit, it'll help you forgive that person. What do you think about that? And, and, and then your mind won't race anymore. Well, see, Jesus knew about these things. That's why he said, let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. There are all kinds of things that we can get frightened of in the world. I mean, like I said, just turn on the news. There's a lot to be worried about. If it ain't nothing about but finances, about your money, and how you're going to pay this and how you're going to do that. There's so many things to be concerned with in the world. But the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. The peace of God. It will surpass everything that makes any sense. Sometimes you know how we want everything to make sense to us. Um, we want to put two and two together, and it's, we want it always to equal four, but sometimes two and two make six when it comes to the Holy Spirit because God is a God of multiplication. You know, when the little boy with the bag of lunch fed 5,000, that didn't make much sense to the disciples at all, you know. But he fed 5,000 people with those two fish and five loaves of bread. And look, had 12 baskets left over for each unbelieving disciple. Yeah, because remember, they were helping feed the multitude. And so today, as we look at the law of God in the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the peace. He said that Jesus said he's the prince of peace. And the reason he's the prince of peace, because he knew he was bringing back the comforter. He knew that once he went into heaven and we began to seek God and receive him, that the comforter, comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, would come back and bring us peace. So what happens to the rest of the world who are not comforted, who are constantly depressed, that are constantly upset, who are constantly... Um, and I can I have a testimony because I had a lot of things that went on with me at Christmas time, and oh, I had loved ones that left this world, close loved ones. My son was one, and my husband was the other, my first husband years ago. And it took the peace of God to get over that and not feel sorry for myself. It took the Holy Ghost. Not and not saying that I don't think about them and not saying it doesn't hurt me to think about um what you know that they're gone. But because of the Holy Spirit, because of the Holy Ghost is a comforter, it's a leader and a guider. It helps me to think positively, even in such a negative atmosphere or a negative world. Now I'm not trying to tell you that I don't think negative thoughts because they do happen. They do come across my head, but I don't dwell on them very long because right behind the negative thought, the Holy Ghost brings a positive one. And he lets me know that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. 
I mean, it's just that good. The more you, listen, the more that you consecrate yourself and, and soak yourself and saturate yourself with the word of God, the more the word of God re- just comes back to your remembrance over and over again, the things that he has told us or said to us, the, the positive things, the Holy Spirit will bring it back. Not that you have to remember it. The Holy Spirit will bring it back to your remembrance. So those racing thoughts, those those negative things, those things that the devil constantly talks to you about. Even if you have low self-esteem, women, you've got low self-esteem about yourself. You think you're, you know, you're not as pretty as all the rest of the people in the world. But the Holy Spirit is a comforter and he comforts you despite of what you might think you look like. He'll tell you you're beautiful. And you probably are inside and out, but the enemy will tell you something different. But you got that, the the Holy Spirit to tell you good things about yourself. Not only that, but to comfort you when you're all alone by yourself. If you live alone, if you're, you know, by yourself, you're an older person, you live alone. The Holy Spirit is right there to take care of you. It's a guider. It's a leader. And it teaches you things, things you didn't know. And it brings back good things back to your remembrance. Who wouldn't serve a God like Jesus? Who wouldn't serve the spirit of God uh, like the one we have? He's a comforter. You know, um, back when I, like I said, lost my son, the tears that I cried, I did cry. But I was comforted. And by an unknown force, it was not seen. And people walked around and said, how can you, how can you preside at your son's funeral and not shed a tear? How can you do that? But it was the Holy Spirit that comforted me. Before I got up there, I was straight. I didn't cry anymore. He wiped the tears from my eyes. And so I'm telling you, if you haven't received the Spirit of God in your life, you're missing out. You're missing out on the blessing of God, the the very thing that Jesus came to give. Yes, he came and died and shed blood for our sins, but he also came to bring us something that would help us out in our daily walk so we would never have to walk alone again. He's a friend that sticks closer than any brother. I've heard that so many times, but it's true. It is true. When you walk by yourself, you may be a single person. You may not have anybody. You may be an orphan. You may be somebody that your mother and your father might be gone. And you don't have anybody else to talk to. Well, the comforter, he'll talk to you. He'll comfort you. Late at night, when nobody else wants to talk to you, he'll be right by your side. And he never, ever will leave you. He will be a friend that's closer than anyone else. I mean, I've been to the point where at night when I needed someone to hold me, the Holy Spirit would comfort me and he'd be there with me and for me. And I would lay down and sleep in peace. The word of God talks about dwelling in safety and being at peace. If you lay down and go to sleep at night. But some people don't realize that it's just that real, but he is. He's a person and the person of the Holy Spirit is a leader and a guider. And Jesus promised that he would send it in his father's name. Now we know who the father is and we know who the son is and we know who the Holy Spirit is. It has a name. Above every other name, the the name of Jesus or Yahweh or however they want to, you want to call him, but he comforts and he takes care of us. And he, you know, he's a leader and he's a guider into all truth. Praise God. And I just, I just kind of went, went through there because I know what he's done for me. See, I can talk about what I know that he's done for me because I lived through it. When my husband walked off and left me years ago, 
you know, before he died. And it was the most depressing time of my life. I can't begin to tell you how I was in pain and hurt. And there's so many of you that have gone through the same situation. You've been through a painful divorce. You've been through negative things that have gone on in your life. You've been through deaths. You've been through uh, drug overdoses. Or you've been through where you're, you know, you've had a father to abuse you. You've had things to happen. And you felt like nobody cared. But Jesus was right there. If you had just called out to him, he was there. He was there for you, and he was there for me. When my husband walked off and left me with two kids, he was there. And I, I, all I know is that he's the reason I made it through. I look back and wonder how I made it over. I have no idea other than it had to be God. It had to be the Spirit of God telling me what to do, telling me which way to turn. You know, peace. Is something that most people don't have today. Yeah, they might have it a little while, but the next thing you know, they're on the phone talking to somebody, gossiping about something that happened to them. But when you have true peace, you don't have to get on the phone. You don't have to get on a text. You don't have to be on Facebook. You don't have to be on Twitter. You don't have to talk to nobody. But when you got true peace, you can sit down and realize that God's got it all in control. You don't have to worry about what anybody else is going to say or what they're going to do to you. You don't have to worry about where your next meal is coming from because you know God is going to be there. He's going to take care of your finances. He's going to walk and talk with you. He's going to tell you what to do about your finances. See, He's not just a faith God. He's a doer. He's a God that, that wants us to get out and do. My husband talks about that all the time. He's a God that wants us to get out and do because faith without works is dead anyway. You know, in James uh, 3, he said, show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by my works. And so today, the Holy Spirit will not only give you faith and tell you how to get through, but it'll tell you what to do in your situation to make it better to give you peace, to give you the love that you're missing, to help you to forgive, you know, because I had to forgive my husband after he walked off and left me. And God blessed me with another one. So women today, men today, if you're upset with your, your ex, forgive them and receive the Holy Spirit today. Receive him and God will take care of you. Every need will be met. But you got to do it God's way. God wants you to get out and do. Love people. By all means, follow peace with all men. All men. Even people that seem to be your enemy. Be, be at peace with them. Because after all, the word of God says that you heap fires of coal on their heads. <laughs> In other words, you eventually... Put those, put the fire out that's in their head and in their mind against you. Just be, be peaceful, be at peace. But you can't without the Holy Spirit. You can't. There's no way. And Jesus knew that. That's why he said, my peace, I leave with you. Not as the world gives. And so I'm going to. Put this down and I'm going to let my husband talk more with you about peace because he's had some times that he's had some problems and worries. He's had to fight off the enemy on several occasions about different things. And so I know he knows about peace and how God has been peaceful, a peace of the Prince of Peace in his life. So. Yeah. Um, in 1997, I had to make the biggest decision of my life. My mom was was diagnosed with cancer of unknown origin, and at the time, I worked in the medical profession, which was a kidney dialysis specialist. 
So of course, you know, I have seen many people come and pass away. Not that I didn't care, but I knew that when they passed away, their suffering on this earth is over. So when most staff members would get upset and the patients would get upset, and they say, well, you don't care, you don't care. And I looked at them and said, no, they should be at peace now. They don't even have to come to this life-sustaining event no more and deal with the needles being stuck in them and them hollering and screaming because it hurts so bad. Or dealing with the low blood pressure where they're so weak they can't even help themselves out of the facility without getting a wheelchair. Or when they was being avoided by friends that they thought would be there in their time of need. Mm -hmm. As you see, they were coming to me and tell me all their sorrow. And I didn't realize sometimes that I, it wasn't my problems I was dealing with in my head. It was listening to everybody complain day in and day out what they was going through and what they were facing. Mm. But what I did is, after a while, I found comfort in God knowing that he allowed me to have the mindset that they could come to me in, in peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. That, that God was helping me to be a comforter for them. Amen. So God was kind of trying to train you at, to be a pastor because you were going, people were coming to you then to get uh, knowledge and understanding from you and wisdom from you for, about this situation anyway. But God was taking you to a different level and trying to train you to be the pastor that you are today because of what, how they kept coming to you. So when they came to you about their ailments, you had comfort, comforting words to give, right? Praise God. So it's like that God will, God will and God will, God will, God, you won't know what your destiny is. I, I'm glad sometimes we don't know what our destiny is, but sometimes God will put us right in a situation where people will come to us. And as people come to us with their problems, we don't know that we're preparing all the time for ministry. We don't know that we're preparing to be a pastor at that time. But that's what's going on. And so, but I thank God for my husband. I thank God for his testimony because a lot of times people are hurting. I left that out. People are hurting from going to the doctor. They're hurting because they're having needles stuck in them. They're hurt. This is this is worrying too. This is trouble too, and this is stuff to, for your heart to be troubled about as well. Uh, all this you know stuff that goes on at the doctor's office that you have to endure. Uh, you have to worry about if your blood pressure. You know if you if your doctor is going to notice that your blood pressure has gone up high, if your sugar levels gone up. Did the test, did I pass the test, you know, the stress test, whatever, whatever, all these things, um, dialysis, you know, um, going to the clinic every, you know, every, every week, all of that, God wants us to be, uh, take the word of God as, as a medicine. And as we take the word of God as a medicine, you know, the Holy Spirit will begin to heal our bodies based on uh how much faith we have because you know each time you hear the word you develop more and more faith and to each man is given a measure of faith so what your faith is today might not be what my faith is today because i don't know how much word you is in you how much word you've received how much word you you know uh, kept in so the more word that you accumulate in your memory and in, that's why the holy spirit will bring it back but you know, it, you have to keep on receiving the word in order to develop faith to be healed. A lot of people don't know how it works. They think, well, oh, you can just go in the hospital and lay hands on everybody and they'll just everybody will be healed in the whole hospital. Well, no, that might not be the will of God at the time, especially if they haven't developed their faith to be healed. Because if you don't believe you can be healed, you know, um, Jesus went to the to a lot of people that he was healing. He said, do you believe I'm able to do this? 
Well, if you didn't believe it, then, you know, he couldn't do anything. He could do no great, great works in this city because of the level of your faith. So it's according to your faith that you be healed. But I'm, I'm not against doctors at all because they do a lot of great work. But until you can develop your faith, continue to go to the doctor, continue to take your medication. That, and hopefully God will wean you off of it. But meanwhile, just obey the doctor and, and, and immerse yourself in the word of God. Immerse yourself in uh, so you can be healed. Praise God. I thank God for that because a lot of us, you know, take it lightly that we're in good health. But we need to eat right so that the Lord will continue to bless our health. So it's a lot of goodness in uh, what he's talking about because we as Christians, we eat too much and we eat the wrong things. And so we need to be, it needs to be a balance. Amen. We need to be a balance, but that's a whole nother subject altogether. But thank God for him. And so as we continue, I want to continue to talk about the prince of this world as we move on to what, now we talk about that Jesus is the prince of peace. Uh, and it says so in Isaiah here that Jesus is the prince of peace. <laughs> he is the prince of peace. In Isaiah 9 and uh, 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, and to unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. See, this is what the Holy Ghost does. Mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Amen. Praise God. Prince of Peace. Now we want to talk about the prince of this world. And you say, well, who is the prince of this world? Well, verse 30 tells us who or tells us about the prince of this world. And I'm going to tell you who he is in just a few minutes. But in verse 30, it says, hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So we, we're talking about the prince of this world. Who could it be? Now, we know that they say the devil is the prince of the air. So how do we say that? It's because his demons and his imps roam, roam around in the atmosphere all the time. Even back in Jesus' day, most of his ministry was casting out devils the whole time. He had to cast demons into swine. Because a man named Legion had all these demons in him. And today is still true. So the prince of this world is Satan himself. Now he might come in the Antichrist, who is soon to come. But nevertheless, Jesus is still the prince of peace. He's still Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end the first and the last. He was here in the beginning and he's going to be here at the end. He's going to be your judge. If he's not your savior, he's going to be your judge. So today, instead of being troubled, instead of being worried, instead of being um, troubled on every side about everything that's going on in your world, on your job, with your children, with your spouse, about money, why don't we seek to get the comforter? The one that's going to give us peace. Jesus Christ. He said he is the Prince of Peace. And I believe him because he's been a great sense of peace in my life. I can tell you so many stories that would not even make sense through my life where he's given me peace when I didn't think it was possible. But it was. And today... If you don't know the Lord and the pardon of your sin, we're here today to help you. We're here today to help you to get back on the right track. It would be a great start if you gave the Lord your life tonight, today. So repeat this after me. Make a new, new resolution that you're going to serve the Lord in 2018 and that you're going to receive the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Praise God. Repeat after me. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. We praise you right now. We give you glory for every listener. But God, we ask that you, you, you bless each hearer of the word that we, uh, we've, we've said today. 
and uh, they're going to repeat the sinner's prayer after me. Say, Jesus, Lord, I am a sinner. Come into my heart and give me peace. Give me the spirit. Forgive me of all my sins. Help me to walk right. Help me to talk right. God, you promised that you would comfort me. God, come in and, and, and be a comforter as you promised. Lord, I won't sin anymore. Help me to live holy by reading your word every day, by getting in a good church. If you do these things, I'll be so grateful to give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you said that prayer with me, I want you to write me today. I want you to email me, find me on Facebook, go to my website, BibleVisionMinistries.org. Find a way to get to me. There are so many ways to get to me. Even my number, my cell phone number is on my website. I want you to call me and say, hey, I accepted Jesus as Lord of my life. I received him again. I took I took him back and I believe that the Lord now now, now the Lord is not going to force himself on you. So you're going to really need to want the Holy Spirit in your life. And that means doing all the right that you know. And believe me, he's going to come in. Oh, and when he comes in, you'll be so glad. And I know you're feeling the peace of God right now as I'm talking to you because you, you accepted the Lord as your personal savior. And that, my friend, is the best thing you could have ever done. And so the Lord is going to come in and fill you up with his spirit right now. And begin. you're going to begin to, to, to hear words, uh, uh, words that you have never heard before. Speaking in other tongues as the spirit gives you utterance. And as you do that, just say them out loud. And the spirit will come in and fill you with his spirit. As you hear the words, say them out loud and the spirit of God will come upon you and overshadow you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just begin to praise him right where you are. And he will He will come in and do a mighty work in you. Praise God. Well, that's all the time we have today. I want to thank you for tuning in to Thy Kingdom Come broadcast and Bible Vision Ministries. Remember that the power of the kingdom of God is in you. Keep listening.